Hello guys, Craig Frost here again with another Juicy Tuts tutorial. Today we're going to be inside Photoshop again to try and make this cool graphic that you see here on your screen of maybe a space nebula or explosion or some planets or something. And I think this looks pretty impressive, but you'll be surprised I think at how easy it is to actually achieve something like this. Um, I'm going to move quite quickly just because there is a few steps to get in and I want to keep the video quite short, but you can always pause it and work along with me if it is too fast, but um, it's not too difficult. So we're going to open up a um, we're going to open up a new document. I'm working in 1920 by 1080 at 300 pixels per square inch, but you don't really need it to be that high if it's on screen anyway. Um, so click OK. Now I'm going to set my colors to black and white and I'm just going to fill the background um, with black. So you just do that. And then I'm going to come up to filter, noise, add noise. And this is going to be our stars in the background. So you want amount to be 100%, distribution to be on Gaussian, and monochromatic. Otherwise, you get all these colored stuff that do not look like stars at all. So there we go. Now, this looks like a pretty dense star field at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to filter, blur and Gaussian blur and slightly blur this, not by that much, but by 0 0.5, 0 0.6, something like that. Okay. And then I'm going to come up to image adjustments and levels and just bring my black point up. And that's actually going to lessen the amount of stars that you see. Um, so you can fine tune this to see how many stars you want. So I want something about there and then you can bring the white point in to just make them brighter. But I think somewhere around there is fine. Click OK. Now I'm going to make a new layer. And over here I'm going to pick my color to be a kind of a, a rich blue. Um, and then pick the brush tool. Make the brush bigger. And um, I'm just going to paint in my nebula area. Sounds like a euphemism. Uh, you don't have to be too accurate with this. Um, you can try out different shapes and see what works for you. Then come over and change the color again to a, trust me on this, a pinky color. Pinky purple. Not quite really bright pink, but between the two. And just inside the blue, paint this pinky area. And then you can press D on your keyboard to change your foreground and background back to black and white and then press X to swap them so white's the foreground. And then just paint in um, some white. These will be the hot spots of the, the nebula area. Okay, now that's done. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm just kidding. So next step is to come up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur again, but this time we're going to blur it by a lot more than 0.6 pixels. We're going to blur it by about 100. Um, this will depend on the size of your canvas as to what looks right. But uh, I think about there looks fine. Um, we're getting there, don't worry. It will suddenly come together. Now I'm going to click new layer again. And with my foreground as white and my background as black, I'm going to come up to filter, render, clouds. And there we go. And then I'm going to change the blend mode to color burn. No, I've got that wrong. Color dodge, sorry. Phew, thought I did something wrong there that I couldn't work out. There we go, color dodge. And now on this level, we're going to, on this layer, we're going to bring up the levels again and adjust the midpoint. This will adjust the vibrancy of the explosion. So if I go to the left, it'll just get brighter and brighter. And to the right, it'll get less and less. So I want it to look like quite quite bright but not too bright so about there works for me i think maybe slightly less i'm not sure about there i'll do okay now we're going to add another new layer and we're going to come up to the marquee tool and make sure we have the elliptical mark marquee tool selected elliptical marquee tool that is hard to say now hold shift and alt down as you click out and that'll draw a circle and release Press X to change your foreground color to black and then just fill with the foreground color and then press, you can press command D or control D to deselect that area. Now drag this below the cloud layer, and double click this layer and select inner glow. Now you can leave the opacity where it is in the blend mode to screen, pick the color 
Now we want it to be a light pink. Um, so I just picked it from the actual picture. That seems about right. And then change the size. And you can see what it's doing there on the actual, on the actual, what will become the planet. I'm going to change this to a slightly lighter pink. There we go. Um, then come down to satin and change the blend mode to normal. And the color, you can pick one of these blues we've got out here. Uh, maybe make it slightly lighter. And then change the distance up a little bit. It's around the 20 mark. And then change the size up to around 100, I think will do. It just kind of gives the planet a bit of shape to make it look a bit more three-dimensional than a 2D circle. Um, that's looking great already. Now you can actually move the planet around and watch it blend with different parts of the clouds like up here where it touches. I quite like it there actually. So what I'm going to do now is duplicate this layer um, by pressing command J and then moving it across. Now I'm going to resize this layer by pressing command T and holding shift as I do so. Drag the corner in to make it a bit smaller and then press enter and I want to move this around slightly somewhere else and now um, double click the effects and you want to change the inner glow size down slightly because we've now changed the size of the planet and just adjust the um, satin distance as well just so because we've changed the uh, size of the planet but the effects don't change their size as you do it um, okay so that's pretty much there you can leave it there if you want actually I'm not gonna make a new layer though and I'm gonna select this bluey color again and I'm actually going to paint around the outside in this bluey color. Just roughly, it doesn't have to be accurate. And then I'm going to select the pinky color again. I like the pinky color. And just put that in, in some of the parts around the side. And then I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur by about 100, 108 again. Leave it at that. And then I'm just going to drag this layer below the cloud layer. And then just drop the fill level and that just adds a little bit more of this kind of cloudiness or particles into the space the space picture to fill the blacks and you can fine tune this how you want so that's it that's basically it you can then add an adjustment layer if you want and you can change the colors um, of the hue and saturation adjustment layer to make it maybe a more turquoisey color or more of an explosion and you can also change the lightness if you don't want it to be as bright. Um, you get the idea. So there you go. One final thing which you might want to try is uh, this will make everybody go wow. How did you do that? Drag a picture of yourself in and uh, place it over one of the planets. And then what you could do, I mean I'm just thro throwing this out there, what you could do is uh, put your face on the planet. Everyone will love you. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you like this one. Give it a thumbs up and favorite it and share it if you like it because it really helps us out. Um, thanks, basically. I'll see you again next time. Bye.